So now I'm going to dye the, uh, the lampshade fabric. And to do this, I'm going to use Chemtex dyes, which is actually a Procyon dye. The same thing, but it's just a, one make of it. You can get them in very small jars, which is much more suitable for the kind of scale of dyeing that I do. So I, weigh, I have weighed that uh, piece of fabric that I have just sewn while it was dry to check its weight because it's really important to get exactly the right weight to the amount of dye. Otherwise, you'll end up with colours that you can't control. So I'm going to dye it a really nice mauve that I've, uh, I've, I've done lots of samples before uh, of different mauves, and I'm going to now dye it this, this lovely soft mauve colour. And I'd, So the experiment that I did with that is it's got a mixture of royal blue and cerise dyes to make, to make the dye. The, the mauve dye and I have to work out how much salt I need and how much uh, soda soda ash I need and this and the salt as well so first of all I'm going to use about five liters of water and the amount of salt and the amount of soda ash are dependent on the amount of water we're going to use so I'm go I need 200 grams of salt which I'll weigh out now It's quite a lot. <laughs> yep, there you are. Yeah, it's quite a lot for one little light fitting. And we need to dissolve that really carefully in, in uh, hot water. So we, we need to dissolve it. I need to keep a careful note of the amount of water I've got. I've now got one and I've now used one and a half litres. So I never need another three and a half litres to make up the dye bar. So that's the salt dissolved. And then we need to weigh out the dye stuff. And first of all, I have to work out the percentages, which is slightly complicated and don't do it on a day when your, your brain's not working very well. Because you, you've got to add numbers and do various things and take percentages. So I'm going to wear a face mask because it, I use this regularly. Um, I'm going to use I'm going to use royal blue and cerise. I've got a tiny uh, jeweler's uh, jeweler scale here, and because it's such a small amount of dye that I'm going to use, such a small weight of dye, I actually to get the scale started, I actually put a screw on it because it makes it more accurate. And if you're dyeing a really small amount of dye, it's really tricky to get the scales to start acting. And I need, I'll put my face mask on at this point. It's a very, very powerful color. So you need very little, very concentrated dye stuff. And I need even less of the pink. Very small amount here. And now we need to just add some water to the dye stuff and make it into a paste. As soon as I put water on it, it's not really a problem for the face mask. It's the dust that's the problem. And with this particular, so I've used cerise red and royal blue mixed together. And with this particular dye, it's, the pink takes is really difficult to dissolve, I've discovered. Um, so you have to make sure that re every little bit is fully dissolved. I'll just put that to one side. Uh, and get the dye bar, a plastic bucket and pour our one and a half litres and I just need to make that with another three and a half litres. Three litres and we need another two. So there we have five litres of water. Now hopefully the dye will have mixed. Yes, avoid getting it any on your fingers at this stage. It really stains. Um, so I need to I have to make sure that that's really well dissolved. 
and pop it in. Yes, that's okay. Good. So now I need to get the fabric from which I've had soaking for about an hour and put it in the dye bath. And as soon as it goes in the dye bath, you want to sort of immerse it and make sure it's completely covered. And at the moment, it's very pale. You have, mustn't panic at this stage. It takes a bit of time for it to get the colour. And then we sand around doing, just agitating it gently for half an hour. The salt helps the uh, dye stuffs adhere to the fabric, to go into the fabric. So we, we will just ag gently agitate it for the next half an hour. And then there's the final stage, which is adding soda ash, which is the chemical that helps fix the dye to the fabric, makes it permanent. At this stage, this colour would come off it. But once the soda ash is in, that makes the, 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 dye, the dye permanent. So we're down to the last uh, few minutes of uh, the first part of the dyeing, which is the dye stuff with the salt. And in a minute, literally a minute, the alarm will go off and we will be adding the soda ash. So in the meantime, I can weigh out the soda ash, which is the chemical used to fix the dye. So again, I need that. I do need a face mask because this is also not such a good thing. And I need uh, 75 grams. Oh, there's the timer. Add the hot water. Dissolve it fully. Once it's dissolved, you don't need the face mask. So that's dissolved completely. Now it needs to go in the dye bath. But the fabric needs to be lifted out of the way, otherwise you'll end up with uneven. So it's a lift out of the dye bath to add the soda ash, which will help fix the dye. I'll get that in there, make sure it's stirred around. And in fact, you'll find the colour actually changes a little bit at this stage. It's gone very slightly bluer. But of course, this colour will be much lighter because it's wet at the moment, and it'll dry much lighter. And then that needs to be agitated in that mix of, with the soda ash now for another sort of half an hour for to fix the dye fully. Just make sure it's really evenly agitated in the dye bath. And there we go. So we'll set a timer again for another half an hour. Half an hour to 40 minutes really is is the time needed. But you must keep slightly agitating the fabric during that time. Not constantly, but every five minutes or so.